Video's a little late. We're taking the 91 and a half. Got started a little bit late. We have some uh, short covering off the lows here. Once we broke above the uh, Cape Parade high, we didn't get in in the 88s, but you know, we, uh, at least we got, we got in here at the 91 and a half. Between the short covering, uh, the day time frame, getting out of the trade. People for uh, the weekend would probably want to get out of the trade. It'd be interesting to see if we have a retracement before uh, we go too far up. But if we don't have a retracement, then the uh, 9150s will look pretty good. If we do, then uh, they obviously won't look very good. But we're above the I period high. The point of control is uh, a bit above us. It's around 96, 97. So if we can turn the uh, 91 and a half into the 96s or 97s, that'll be. Uh, a nice 10 or 12 point trade and uh, that'll get the majority of our loss back. So let's see if we can uh, make this work. I'll let the video run for a bit. You know, short covering uh, doesn't take long to achieve higher and higher levels. As a matter of fact, the volume, look at the volume, erratic. No, nothing, nothing on the bids here. Zero, zero, six, zero, 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 six. Just volume's really erratic. The short covering rally became um, evident once the uh, K period broke the J period low and the L period couldn't get lower than 80. We didn't get in there though because everything that I've been looking at on the NYSE tick chart has worked thus far. And uh, you know, having dropped so many points, the, the last setup looked a little suspicious. But uh, we, on the other hand, we didn't uh, get back in either, even though that suspicion became evident. 96 is our target, 96 to 97. It's the G, the G period high, um, I believe, is 96 and change. The G period high is 97 and change, 97.50. The point of control is actually at 96. On one chart, it's 95. Between 95 and 97 is our target. Our stop is... Uh, 88. This is our last uh, and final trade for the day, so we'll just let the snippet run here. Only have 244 into the snippet, so we can run it up to about 10 minutes or so. We'll let the market run. Now the question is, is the point of control, um, you know, we're already at the 95, 96s. Let's, uh, let's let this trade run a little bit. Looks like the short covering rally is upon us. We're about 19 minutes into the L period here. Well, the minute you wait, you know, to get out and what do you have? You have a little sell-off and your profit starts to evaporate. Uh, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh my, oh my, jeez. We're going to take the 9250s if we can get them. 9250s, out. Out, out, out. Jesus Christ. Didn't have the ability to stay with that trade at all. Short covering rally shouldn't retrace uh, like that. But we, um, oh, that just sucks. <laughs> we got a couple points. God, we hit our target and within a minute we sold off to barely just a point over our entry. That's amazing. Golly, jeez. Now the question is, you know, there's 45 minutes to the cash close. You get back in here at the 92s, definitely uh, have some short covering, I believe. Let's take the 92 and a quarter, get in long 92 and a quarter.
their guidance to the lower end of its earnings forecast ahead of its analyst meeting and said it was on track to meet or exceed its key financial goals through 2010. CNBC Pharmaceuticals reporter Mike Huffman is covering the analyst meeting and he joins us now with the first on CNBC interview. Mike, take it away. CNBC by Genentech's Chief Financial Officer, Mr. David Ebersman, right after your meeting has ended. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So, yes, it's a down market today, but I don't know if you know this, your stock is selling off down about $2.75. Could it be because while you guys are visibly very progressive with your casual dress and open collar shirts, that you're too conservative when it comes to your financial guidance? Well, as you know, Mike, today we had our annual investor meeting and we invited the investment community to come here and update on what's going on in our business. The key messages we focused on are how we're progressing in our pipeline, the molecules we're investing in to try and help patients and drive the long term growth. Wow, let's get over the 9650 area. Uh, financial guidance for 2008 that we're now expecting our range per share in the range of 335 to 345 per share. We're off to a good start so far in 2008 and we feel like that's an appropriate uh, place for us to end the year. But David, is your call? No, I just can't get any traction here. We're going to take the 93 and a quarters. I think we got to fill the 93. Oh, that's terrible. It's being a point. Um, 93. Yeah, 75, a point and a half. Last trade, point and a half, two points, three points, one point. Certainly haven't made uh, a whole lot of uh, profit on these short trades. But, you know, short covering rallies, the real successful ones, you know, I haven't really seen, you know, sell off four or five points and then consolidate and then have a point rally and then come back down. It's a little bit uh, unusual from what I recall. Uh, we'll pause the video and maybe have another opportunity. Uh, there's the there's the target. Jeez. Amazing. Uh, let's take the 95s. We're going to try this again. Let's go buy a couple 95s. Successful over the last 10 years. We've been able to grow our earnings, for example, at a compound annual growth rate of about 30% over the last 10 years. We are starting to generate the kind of cash position that enables us to have those conversations internally. We have over $6 billion in cash today. We're See if we can hold on to these 95s a little longer than a minute. Our top priority would be to invest it in the business opportunities to spend money internally or externally to continue to bring forward molecules that can help patients and drive our long-term growth. But if we have cash above and beyond our needs, we will look at different ways we can return that money to shareholders. David Ebersman, the CFO of Genentech, thanks again for joining us first on CNBC this afternoon. And for more on the analyst meeting and Dylan, how Bear Stearns, Bear Stearns... And per the M period opens up in uh, six minutes. Check out my blog at So we're going to have to pause the video. We're running out of time. If we break over the E period high, in the uh, E period high is 13, 1303, then um, the resistance is the uh, B period high at 1308. Boy, if we can get up to 1308, that would be uh, a great, great trade from the 95. Be able to make uh, all my loss back over the last couple days. So we'll pause the video and see if we can uh, wait that long. Even right now, we've uh, made uh, some points. Well, I'm tempted to take some profit here. Man, oh man. Let's see where this wants to go. The period high is coming up. If we see any sign of cross trade, we're out of this position, getting out of this position. We're going to take the 13s out, 13. That's good enough for me. That uh, gave me 10 points. Uh, so that's uh, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 51. 51 and a half points uh, we made today. That's uh, the biggest one-day gain we've ever made, trading two contracts. So um, I don't know if that completely wipes out our loss, but it's within uh, $100 or so. I think our loss might have been 53 points. I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to look back on the uh, analyzer. We'll uh, update the analyzer and the snippets this weekend and might do some writing. Um, have an idea to implement based on uh, Dr. Stenbarger's suggestions. So, here, uh, here we have. We're going to stop the video and uh, 
watch the market for the next few minutes. I wouldn't be surprised if short covering in the end period continues, um, but there's definitely resistance up at the 1308 area. If you go past the 1308 area, who knows? It'd be interesting to see uh, the market trade next week. Maybe between the uh, 1308 and the 1324 area might be some good trading in there.